we are live. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I am your host, Blake Rafino. This is Are You Serious Sports. We hope that you guys are making it a good one. We know that we are as well. A huge show in store for you tonight. Don't let the Rudy Poos tell you anything negative about LSU. Guys, I got to be honest here. No, I'm not going to lie to you. I have not been, I've, it, me personally, and I'm not really an anticipation type of person, I have not been more amped up, I believe, for me to get ready and, and ready for a season than this upcoming one. We'll talk about it. LSU practice breakdown, what are some things I'm getting? What are some things I'm hearing, and what are some things that I know that happened at LSU's practice today? We will touch on it as we've been pretty accurate, <laughs> or I've been pretty accurate on the LSU practice so far, uh, uh, at least this year. Um, we'll talk about offensive line. Uh, Ed Orgeron spoke today. He clarified what he saw in yesterday's practice, how the offense responded. We will talk on that. God forbid Blake told you something last night, shared the video with it. Ed Ordron confirmed it this morning. Not trying to beat my own drum here, but time stamps don't freaking lie. We'll talk on those Rudy Poos. Um, we'll talk about the offensive line, about what Ed talked about, uh, and some other position groups Ed uh, alluded to. Former LSU quarterback Zach Mettenberger will be joining us at 7.20 p.m. Central Time, so in about 16 minutes or so, we'll be talking to Zach, giving him a call as he, as I believe he's he's still back out uh, in the Los Angeles area. So we'll call him and, and shoot the bull and talk some LSU sports with him and maybe get around the SEC. Uh, also, hashtag Ask Blake every Tuesdays and Thursdays and Saturday mornings. Guys, you can fire your questions in here. If you got a question about LSU or really anything sports related, we do not get political. Fire in there, put the hashtag Ask Blake, and we'll, I'll get to your questions. And Jake Peets is molding his running backs, like I told you just one Monday ago, not yesterday, but a Monday ago, as John Emery confirms it uh, today in uh, the media sessions. So we got a lot to get into tonight. Looking forward to it. Let's get to a couple comments before we get started. Mario says, hey, Blake, go Tigers out in Canada. Danny Snow says, go mother freaking Tigers, but take out the freaking and use the other word. Robert Plaisant says, let's go. We are live. Mark says, it's go time. Woo! Give me two claps. And a Ric Flair. Woo! And Craig Schillens, yes, and we are live. No Rudy Poos are up in this thing. No, no Rudy Poos tonight. No Rudy Poos tonight. That's the goal every night is to make sure that we don't have any Rudy Poos up in this thing. Guys, I got to tell you, I, I, and I'm going to get to it in just a minute, I am more than just, you know, um, I don't even know the words to use it right now, uh, what to use right now. Sorry, I'm getting some info about practice. Bear with me. Um, I am more than just ready for the season to start. So we'll get, to, we'll, let's do this. Let's pay some bills uh, around this thing. We'll get to some offensive line, what Ed Orgeron talked about today and confirming our story from last night. Uh, but none better than our good friends over at GM Varno and Sons and our good friends over at BetOnline.ag. Guys, with 63 years of experience, nobody's better than equipping your vehicle than GM Varno and Sons. GM Varno and Sons has faithfully been serving your Denim Springs and Baton Rouge here for over 63 years. With their highly trained technicians, they can take care of your RV, Big rig overhauls, motorhome tax sales, routine maintenance, tire rotations, tire sales. No job is too big or too small over at GM. Give them a call today at 225-664-9992. That's 225-664-9992. Or tell them your good friend, Mr. Blake Rafino, over at AYS. Since you unbind our good friends over at betonline.ag. Guys, you got to get over to place your bets at betonline.ag today. You want to bet on some LSU? They're the place to go and do it. Who's going to win the Heisman? We don't know yet. But you can bet on guys like Max Johnson. You can bet on guys like uh, Ty Davis Price or John Emery, whoever. You can do it. You want to make your first picks from Clemson versus Georgia. You can do that. But you got to get over to betonline.ag today. Guys, as soon as you sign up and as soon as you take that first deposit, you'll get 
of Welcome Bonus. Just let them know your good friend, Mr. Blake Rafino at AYS, sent you on by. That's betonline.ag. Betonline.ag. All right, guys, I'm sorry about that. I was getting some info on practice. I asked a question about an injury, uh, and I'm getting some clarification on it now. Just so – because I keep getting it from everybody, and I'm just trying to get some clarification on this injury. Uh, and I guess we can start there. Guys, Garrett, Garrett Dellinger today at practice was no, was not there again. I don't know how else to say, say it other than this. The kid's got an injury. Now, regardless of how big or how small it is, I don't know that yet. I can't confirm it. I ask LSU what's going on. They tell me basically to kick rocks that they're not going to talk about what's going on with them. No one inside that building, everything that they're giving is 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 skeptical at best. Now, some have said it might be a torn labrum. They want to get a second opinion. So hopefully when we get Coach Ed Orgeron the next time, we can find out some things about Garrett Dellinger. Um, but regardless, it looks like he might be out for a couple for a little while now. So, uh, Marvin Mackey says, hurry up September for LSU football. Blaine Adams says, Jamal Adams got paid, paid. Yeah, he did. My man Jamal Adams got paid. Hey, Jacoby Stevens. I mean, Jacoby Stevens. Jacoby Matthews. Safety from LSU is the highest paid safety in the league. Somebody send that to Jacoby. Hell, I might send it to him. Uh, Adam on YouTube says, smoking a stogie, listening to the man. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Uh, Chelsea says, it's Met Night. Talking about Zach Mettenberg. Yeah, he'll be here in about 11 minutes. About 11 minutes. Uh, Dorian says, hootie who, Rudy Poos. Uh, and Henry asks, Blake, I know it's football season, but don't forget about Cam Thomas to give Cam Thomas some love. Yeah, guys, I, I you know, I, it's tough to, to talk about Cam Thomas. It's tough to talk about summer basketball. He is balling out. And he, I, quite honestly, I think he's on the best team possible for him. Um, but guys, we just got so much football we have to um to talk about. Be good on Facebook says Hard Cardell Shine. So let's start there. Let's talk about what Ed Orsron said today. So Ed Orsron went on with the local media today, uh, talking about his team. Uh, very funny how last night, if you miss a show, I will reiterate of uh, what I said before I get started. Hit the like and share. Everybody on YouTube, subscribe, hit the like, hit the share button. Um, sh- sh- share to your social medias, everything. Do that for me if you're on uh, Periscope, Twitter, hit the retweet, Facebook, share to some groups, hit the like and share. Um, Last night I said, and very vividly, very vividly, and came out, and this is where probably a Rafino, I could have probably listed this as a Rafino's rant, but I didn't. Um, I basically told you that Thursday of last week, Ed Orgeron came out and said, chill about the O-line. Basically, in his own words, was like, damn. We went in the running game. Our offense scored in five plays. Shit. Goes to his defensive line, says, hey, y'all better pick it the hell up. Ed goes to his D-line, the unit, while we're at practice, Ed Orgeron's with the defensive line all the time. And then when team drills comes, he's with the team. Oh, for the Rudy Poos who think that Ed Orgeron's going to micromanage every single detail, about LSU football, you're not out there seeing it, and I understand that you're not. And the reason you're not bringing up the questions about Ed is because you said, oh, Ed's going to micromanage like he always does, and then he goes out to practice, and he's not micromanaging shit. The best D-line coach in the country is your head coach with the D-line. They got physically dominated Thursday, as I mentioned, and gave you the audio from Ed Orgeron from the past Thursday. Scrimmage comes around. Devin White talks to the team, tells Andre Anthony, hey, Big Daddy, it's time for you to step up. Saturday, what does he do? He goes out there. He shows out. And the last two days has been an absolute battle from both lines of scrimmages. If you don't know what you're talking about, if you haven't played football before, I understand it, but don't go into a a, a media credential place and act like you know what the frick that you're talking about, talk shit about Ed Orgeron, and then sit back and say, oh my God, I didn't see that one coming. I knew it all along. And what you don't need to do is go out on your social media platform and say, somebody needs to be fired if X, Y, and Z doesn't happen. When X, Y, and Z is realistically going to happen. Ed 
Ed came out today and said that he thought that guys, young guys, the second unit. So I've also said this. The first thing out of Ed Orgeron's mouth every single time he talks with the media is about what unit? The O-line. Every time. Because everybody seems to have this pressure and concern about him. But as B. Good asked, Cardell Thomas is coming into his own. Guys, just because you're a four and five star doesn't mean it doesn't take you time to get ready to, to translate your talents into the SEC. It takes time for you to translate your play into the SEC and to college football in general. But when you want to sit here and ask the question, whoa, 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 whoa what's going on? Guys, let me tell you what a college scrimmage and a college camp is like. I know a lot of people have not played in one and been a part of one. So to give you a chronological order, you're not scheming. I said this last night. I got to reiterate it again because some people in the back just don't hear it. You're not scheming against the offense. You're not scheming against the defense. Guys, nobody in the country knows what Durante Jones wants to do. To an extent, Neither did Jake Peach or the offense. And they're not scheming on blitz packages. They're not scheming on blitz, or on zone blitzes. Yeah, I quite honestly want to see the front four and the linebackers when they're sending them on blitzes have interceptions, get sacks. I want to see that. I kind of want to see the O-line get a little bit confused and then fire right back once they have film on it and say, hey, you know what? It's not going to happen again. You want to see the defense come out and start out strong. And then you want the offense to fix it like Ed Orgeron said that happened on Monday's practice and like what happened today. You want to see that. LSU can can, can be second in national titles in the last 20 years with three. They can be, what, go to four in the last 20 years. But it always seems to be the issue with everyone, with everyone that covers this team. It's LSU has one bad season in a world during a worldwide pandemic, and everybody freaks out. It's like the Joker off of uh, the Dark Knight. It's like one little thing goes wrong, everybody freaks out. One little thing goes wrong, everybody freaks out. But when you expect something to go on, no one talks about it. Why is that? Because you guys, I can't emphasize enough the trash talking that your own local media is doing about your team. Why are we allowing this to happen? Why? I don't get it. Today's practice, this is what today's practice looked like. Younger guys understanding they better step it the hell up. That's what they're doing. We got film on uh, running plays and the running game from this past Saturday. Oh, the O-line did horrible. Not in the running game. They didn't. If, if you don't believe me, look at the footage that's coming out being leaked. Keep talking your shit. Why is everybody so goddamn negative? Why? Not this past Monday, but the Monday before. I come out here and say, Jake Peets, let me tell you from my own personal perspective. I come out here, um, not this past Monday, not yesterday, but the Monday before, and said that Jake Peets has gotten John Emery to watch film on Christian McCaffrey. Like, I, I, I said that. Knew it for a fact. Knew it for an absolute fact. Today, boom, John Emery says it. Brody Miller at The Athletic, who I thought had a great write up writes it up, puts it out there for everybody to read that missed the interview from John Emery. For the entire week, I got shit on by local media. Shit on. Like, big time Dookie water shit on. He has no idea what he's talking about. And today, John Emery confirms my report from this past Monday. Unreal, bro. Unreal. Uh, Ryan said her Cordell Thomas is ba- making big strides. He is, man. He he, cer- he certainly is. And what's interesting about that, he's being very physical. 
He's been very physical. Very physical at the point of the attack. Uh, so has um, Anthony Bradford. And Ed talked about today um, Charles Turner moving out and being the swing guy. Um, some guys on defense, guys, I'm hearing Mike Jones is kind of settling in, playing in that slot position, kind of the uh, like the Isaiah Simmons, if you remember a couple of years ago uh, with Clemson, fitting in that style of role. And look, here's a great thing about Durante Jones. So many people have have had their questions on Durante Jones. If you can play, you're going to play. Hey, if we're getting beaten man coverage, so what? We're on zone. Is If we're getting beaten zone coverage, you know what? We'll flip it to man. Hey, you know what? We can't get pressure on the quarterback. We're going to go with some exotic blitzes and zone blitzes that are NFL caliber type of things. We're going to communicate, and we're going to get after the quarterback. Hey, you know what? We're going to go in a zone. We're going to rush forward because we have a really good defensive line, and if we can get home with four guys, you know what? We're going to be very dangerous. The biggest thing for this all, but the biggest thing for this uh, this team, the biggest thing for this team so so far has been that they've limited some injuries, not a lot of injuries, some ticky tack stuff here and there that happens every single year. But you're glad to see that this team, uh, in retrospect, has been pretty healthy. You guys, you want this team to go through this entire rest of this week healthy because then the the hitting of camp will start taking a toll back. Okay, after this week, that the big time hitting one on ones going full speed all the time, hitting, 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 takes a step back. And then in about 10, you know, and I guess was it 17 days from today, then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, you'll start uh, game planning for your opponent. You'll start game planning for UCLA. And it's a good place to be. All right, a couple minutes, we're going to get to Zach Mettenberger. Let's get to a couple of these comments before we call Zach. King Mo says, "Am I crazy, or did I see Thunder taking some snaps with Max on the first team? You're not, you're not crazy. Did it again today." Uh, Cole says, "Love the show, Blake. Just have a question. Why is the constant hate on Moscona? Well, see, here's the question that I'm going to ask. Everything I didn't say that man's name, Cole. With all due respect, I never said that man's name, not once, not once that I said our name. The simple fact that you." Uh, Cole, with, and I don't mean this, I just mean this in all due respect, the, the, the simple fact that you came out here and asked me about, uh, asked me this question tells everyone what they need to know. How did you know who I was talking about if I never said the person's name? It's actually not who I was talking about. It's actually not who I was talking about, but the simple fact that you, there were so, guys, we're calling for coaches to be fired uh, for, for what reason exactly? You listen to stuff and you think that you're cool with these guys that are on on YouTube and stuff like that. They're not cool with you, bro. Blaine Smith says, "Max, I'm not getting into the political stuff. Not get not going there." Uh, Terry Hilton says, "Lots of buzz around Nussmeyer. Yeah, guys, look, he had a couple of interceptions in the scrimmage, um, but still a guy that is." A baby baker, man. That's the nickname that they've given him. That's the nickname that they're going to continue to give him. They like the swag that this guy has. Um, and so you got to give it to him. All right, we're going to get to three more. Um, and then we're going to get to Mettenberger. Uh, Roderick says, Blake, it's great to hear Cardo Thomas is making strides now. Could um, it be Craig wasn't the best teacher with him? No, I'm not going to say that because, I mean, it, you know, I think Cardell just had some issues physically with him that maybe hurt him a little bit more in, in his development. I mean, look, a lot of this stuff, other than technique, I mean, yeah, you could say that that uh, Brad has done some good stuff for him. What I would say, though, is, is that Cardell just had some issues um, beforehand. I mean, look, guys, when you have a bad ankle injury, that's not that's never good. Uh, and Danny says, thank God, last weekend without college football. That's actually true. How crazy is that? How crazy is it that this is the last week without college football? All right, let's do this. Let's get to Zach Mettenberger. Uh, before we get to them, guys, you got to go check my good friend over, uh, John Patton over at GMFS Mortgage, 225-614-1234. That's 225-614-1234. If you're buying a new home, saving money on the mortgage that you have now or even doing that cash out refi, the timing has never been better. Get in touch with John Patton from Area Home Lending today. Again, that's 225-614-1234. Tell me, good friend Blake Rafino at AYS sent you on by. All right, let's call let's call Met. Let's see what my man's up to. Try him. 
Trying, Jeremy. <laughs> Trying to keep him real, bro. Hello. Mr. Zach. Yep. What's going on, brother? Blake Rafino, Are You Serious Sports. How you doing tonight, my friend? I'm good, man. You guys good? Zach, we're doing good, and, and we're good. We're doing better for talking to you, man. I know the LSU crowd in here tonight is really excited to hear from you and, and just want to hear more for you. And, and look, Zach, I, I know that we're live, and I kind of want to start off here, man. Just tell all the LSU fans and everybody, all the faithful, what have you been up to the last couple of years, and, and, and what can we be looking forward to to see you? I know you're starting off the podcast uh, here soon, but what is the great LSU quarterback of old, Zach Mettenberger, been up to? Um, well, I've, I've settled down up in Nashville, um, been married for a couple of years now to my wife, Mary, um, have a one-year-old, uh, but been coaching and, and kind of, uh, starting my career with that and, uh, just kind of seeing where that'll take me. Um, but for this year, it's, um, high school football here in Nashville and, uh, you know, hopefully, uh, hopefully to the next level one day. Absolutely. Well, look, man, we're definitely looking forward to to seeing every great, all the great things that you're doing. I know that you're firing off the podcast with our good partners over at Believe. Uh, Zach, I just kind of want to start here. Let's start. Let's let's rewind the clock back just a couple of seasons. It's a, let's go back to 2019. Zach, this team in LSU was was considered one of the best, if not the best, of all time. Being a former quarterback, being an alum of LSU, being the guy that's been in that position that Joe Burrow, you know, in, in the mix of the Joe Burrows and and you guys. Being in that mix of saying, hey, Zach was the last great quarterback that we knew at LSU, then then Joe came in here. When you were looking at this team in 2019, what was your first thoughts and your reactions during that entire season? Um, You know, when you're an alum, man, you're just always optimistic that, that the guys are going to win by, by one. You know, that's all we can hope for. <laughs> right. Hope, uh, hope for as, as alumni and, and fans is just, you know, just winning. But, um. You know, I don't think really anybody really knew, you know, the, you know, the the potential of what that season was beforehand. I don't think really anybody would have guessed what happened, um, you know, in terms of having a number one offense and, and things like that. But, you know, it's uh, it's been a, a beautiful thing to to watch unfold in real time and uh, kind of just see the buzz and, and everything since then, and uh, you know, just being part of that. Tiger community and then being a fan of the Tigers, you know, and it's all about how we recreate that and how we get back to that. So, um, yeah, it's always that's you know that's always the challenge how we get back to it, right? Absolutely, and that was going to be my next question, Zach. Look, LSU did have a tough season last year. Look, we've been doing this for you know over four hundred episodes, and we chronicled the struggles you know during the COVID season. But LSU returns eighteen of twenty-two starters. They turn uh, return a lot of experience. Looking back and try to redo what you did in 2019 until now, Zach, when you look at this team now, is there anything specific that you look for and you think, man, look, this team's got a lot of experience and a lot of talent returning. Do you think that this LSU team could, could come back and make a national statement like they started doing in 18 and 19? Um, yeah, I mean, we, we always are a program that, that you know, we recruit heavy and, and we reload and you know, the saying at LSU for a long time is, is young guys play. Um, so, you know, we'll see. Uh, we, we definitely have the, um, the back end on the defense, you know, to, to, you know, hopefully stop, you know, what offensive football is nowadays. Um, you know, but at the end of the day, it's just about scoring more than another team. And, uh, you know, Max Johnson, I think is a guy who can, uh, be a real trigger man for us. Uh, another Watkinsville native. You know, being the quarterback That's for right. the purple and gold, um, so we got we got a lot of pride and uh, you know, pride in our guy from Watkinsville. I think he's going to do great. But um, you know, again, it's it's one of those years. Really, every year when you're in the SEC West is uh, you know, can you just win? You know, those one score ball games when it gets right. gets down there deep, and then that's really what makes what makes a great season. You know, it's not necessarily you know throwing for 6,000 yards and 60 touchdowns, but, you know, <laughs> winning every game, you know, is just a special, right? So, uh, by any means, I think Coach Orgeron is um, is a guy who preaches that, and I think, you know, the, the team will be, you know, prepared for anything. It's funny, you know, I laugh about that, because, Zach, when you say it out loud, 
six thousand yards and sixty touchdowns. I mean, <laughs> that's just not normal, you know. Like, and I think that that's the comparison. And we have a lot of questions firing inside the the Facebook and YouTube chat. And, and one just asking about. I know you talked about uh, Max Johnson, but watching him in the last two games last season. How high is his ceiling, in your opinion? And is he just really scratching the surface of what is to be expected from him in the upcoming, just this season and the upcoming seasons uh, for, going forward? You know, I, I don't know. I think all these guys nowadays really have such a, you know, a, a unlimited amount of potential. You know, there's really no ceiling anymore with these guys just because, you know, what they see from day one of the Mahomes of the world, right? When right. they're 10, they try to recreate that. So the elevation of the quarterback position is just doing things that, you know, we've never seen before at the position. You know, in a couple of years, it's going to just evolve even more. But having said that, you know, a lot of people forget that the most important thing for the quarterback to do is be a, a quote, you know, game manager. And, you know, because, you know, people have – you know, put a curse on that term, you know, it's kind of a bad thing to be a game manager as quarterback, but people forget, you know, Mahomes is as good of a manager as anybody, you know, he limits errors, he throws it to his guys. Um, he's a lot of qualities that I see in Max and, you know, he's got the best thing of, of anybody and that's he's, you know, he's got a guy who's done it at a high level for a long time and his father. Um, so really, you know, as much as, you know, any coach out there can coach him up. Nobody can coach him up better than his own dad. So, um, right. you know, I think Max is going to have a great year. We do have a lot of questions firing in. Look, the LSU Tiger Nation is pretty fired up that you're with us. Uh, Zach Mettenberger, former LSU quarterback, uh, is joining us. Uh, Zach, a lot of people want to know if you and OBJ, uh, Henry asked, Paul asked, Carl asked, Jason asked, if you, OBJ, Jarvis, Jeremy, would have been in that 2019 offense, <laughs> or would you have been licking your chops to have those guys in that offense that we saw then? Um, I mean, yeah, you know, I'm, I, I've said this before, you know, I'm not really in the woulda, coulda, shoulda game. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I know what we were asked to do. We did it really good. Um, if we would have been asked to throw it 50 times a game, um, yeah. I think we could have done it really Absolutely. well too. So, um, you know, it, it would have been fun for sure, but, you know, it was, it was a hell of a lot of fun, you know, handing the ball off and doing, you know, what we did at LSU for a long time and, and you know, beat the crap out of people and then <laughs> set them up to throw it deep. So we had we right. had a good recipe, you know, it just goes to show there's a bunch of different ways to win a football game. And, uh, you know, we, we did it. We did it the right way, I think. Absolutely. Uh, Zach, looking forward into uh, to this, the, I guess really the the transformation of college football. You know, you you, you we kind of alluded to it to the way that LSU used to do it, the way they're doing it now, and the way that a lot of teams just do it di in different ways. Zach, name, image, and likeness is something that's come up in the forefront. Uh, the transfer portal has come up in the forefront. Is there any advice that you would possibly, being a guy that played in the NFL, that you would give to these young guys and say, hey, look, it, I just want to warn you for this. I know the name, image, and likeness wasn't there when you were, but is there anything in your experience with the NFL that you could relate to these guys and, and what maybe fans should be looking out for with so many things changing in college football? You know, it's it's tough to give advice on something you have no experience in. And uh, with this right. whole deal, you know, that's that's just that. I have, I have none. Um, and even – you know, my advice as, uh, you know, a, a former NFL player and LSU quarterback, you know, may not, you know, be, be relevant for a kid, um, you know, in this regard. But, uh, you know, it's definitely going to be an interesting few years seeing, you know, how many times we, I don't even know, edit this bylaw you know how many mm -hmm. bylaws are going to come from this you know just because it's going to be a slippery slope and it's only a matter of time before you know something gets too crazy right so it's 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 going to be interesting to see how it all unfolds but really there's there's no advice i can give anybody i mean you know do do what's best for what you know you know for your family for yourself um but you know try to do it with class and dignity because you know a lot of the stuff and uh in the social media world, 
um, people kind of tr- interpret you as being a bad person or being a selfish person. And, hmm. you know, there's, there's a lot of things that you got to kind of weather more so than we did 10 years ago, um, in the recruiting cycle. But, um, yeah, it's just a wild world now, uh, you know, in college recruiting and, and just with the NIL, it's, um, it's going to be interesting to see. That's for sure. Zach, a couple more, and I, I really appreciate your time and you joining us. Uh, a couple more before we get out, get you out of here. Uh, just going outside of LSU and around the SEC, a lot of teams uh, just really have a lot of depth. You have LSU, A and M, Ole Miss has a prolific offense. Alabama's always there. Georgia, what can Florida do? Is there is there a couple teams that you look around outside of LSU that you say, hey, look? I'm going to keep my eyes on them. I think that they're going to have a really good season. Or do you think it's just the same old cats that are going to be up there at the top of LSU, Georgia, and Alabama? Or do you think an A&M or Ole Miss or somebody can slip up and and, and make some serious noise this season? You know, it's just one of those things. It's until until somebody makes that noise, you know, we can't really hear them, right? <laughs> um, right. You know, until, until somebody knocks off the big dogs and uh, – you know, the perennial winners, it's, uh, it's all speculation. It's all, you know, optimism and being hopeful. Um, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of good players across this league, a lot of good coaches. Um, but, but we all know who, who, you know, when I say the big dogs, they, that's, you know, the Georgias, the Alabamas, the, uh, you know, Auburn's LSU's, you know, the, the teams that have been kind of in it, Florida, you know, the last few years, you know, one of those outside looking in teams, you know, South Carolina's and Vanderbilt, it's, um, you know, it's tough for sure. <laughs> but, um, you know, you say Texas A&M and, you know, until they, you know, until they win the West, you know, haven't done nothing. Right. So, uh, Preach. <laughs> we'll see, we'll see, man. Um, but you know, being just a football player, I am, that's just kind of how I'm kind of, you know, been ingrained over years to think, um, and really it's just the old adage, take it one game at a time. Uh, I think that's why, you know, the great teams in, in the SEC have been great is because, you know, they do a good job minimizing, uh, the outside, you know, world from what they're doing and, uh, you know, just take it one week at a time. So yeah, it'll be again, you know, with fans being back, you know, the world being a little bit back to normal, it's going to be a heck of a year to, uh, you know, be a football fan again. Absolutely. Zach, one more and we'll get you out of here. Uh, one of your former TV teammates, Jarvis Landry, was in the top 100 of NFL players uh, selected by the NFL players. And it's interesting to see, you know, what Jarvis has been able to do over the last 10 years, uh, not just at LSU, but in the NFL. O- Odell Beckham, obviously, everybody knows uh, a little banged up, but he's coming back. Zach, when when you guys were playing and, and, and everybody remembers the offense and and you guys just doing what y'all did and how prolific you guys did it, did you know then that those two guys would be who they were ten years from now? Did you always see that, or or was it kind of like, dang, did Jarvis just do that when he was in the NFL, or did you just always have that feeling? You know, it um it definitely skewed my perception of what good is you know most guys <laughs> right go to college and then you know then they're maybe lucky enough to play with the caliber guy like them you know maybe one of them at receiver in their career you know um right out the gate at lsu i had two of the best you know in the league at the time honestly i mean even when they were juniors in college they would have been you know top 100 guys then um right. But fortunately for me, I had a, a OC, Cam Cameron, who uh, had a lot of NFL experience. And that was one of the first things he told me. He said, you know, you're going to get to the NFL and you're not going to have a better two receivers on your team. You might have one guy as good as them, but you will never have two on the same team. And, uh, you know, you kind of chuckle at that. Ah, no way. It's the NFL. Everybody's like these guys. And uh, Found out really quick that not everyone in the NFL is like those two dudes. Um, <laughs> right. But, uh, but no, we, you know, we all knew, uh, you know, collectively, not only were they talented, but, you know, those two guys work harder than anybody. And, uh, you know, that's not the glamorous thing to, to talk about, but, um, you know, they're, they're, they're working when, um, the spotlight's on them, you know, and I'll, they do work and they'll, they'll pimp it out for the, for the spotlight, but, 
when the cameras aren't rolling, those two dudes are still grinding and, uh, you know, being the best in the business. Zach, that's absolutely fantastic to hear. And just taking a, a step behind the curtain and, and, and what you guys were thinking then and now to see what they were doing in the, in the league. Uh, brother, I appreciate you joining us and, and your time tonight. Tell everybody what you guys are cooking up and what the podcast that you guys got going on and where they can find it. And I know that, you know, I told them that we're going to be partners over at Believe and guys over at Believe, but tell everybody where they can find it and when you guys are, are looking to launch and where they can find everything that you are doing. Yeah, um, you know, check us out the the Believe um, Network. We're SEC QB. Um, it's myself and uh, my good buddy Riley Senior, who uh, played O line at LSU for a year and then um, finished his career at Alabama as a frat star. And uh, <laughs> we've uh, really just been great friends. Um, but you know, we're just going to kind of uh, you know have more of a relaxed point of view on. Uh, on the topic of football and the quarterback position, we're going to have, you know, I'm going to try and get some, uh, some great O linemen, get them out there on our podcast. Yeah, you are big boys and, uh, some, some good, some good, um, some good guests. So definitely stay tuned. It's going to be, um, it's going to be fun to watch it unfold throughout the season. That's for sure. Well, from one and thanks for the time, man. Thank you for letting me plug that. Oh, no problem, dude. But as one, as one former small school, uh, FCS O lineman to a, a former SEC quarterback. Thank you for giving us the time of day, my friend. That's all I got to tell you. Okay, <laughs> that we we've always been looking for this time. Our time to shine uh, is now. So Zach, thank you very much, sir. And we'll we'll talk again soon. All right, man. Thank you. Thank you. That is Zach Mettenberger, former LSU quarterback. Uh, guys, I know what you're saying. I I get all that. But look, Zach is a guy that look. He's a very chilled. Uh, individual be looking out for his podcast. I know that they're going to do a great, great job. And look, Zach is there's not a lot of people that can you can take you behind the curtain when it comes. It, trust me, I've had these conversations, but can take you behind the curtain from an X's and O's standpoint and what he's seen, uh, especially from a quarterback position. So be on the lookout for Zach's podcast. They'll be launching soon. Uh, it was good uh, to catch up with him. Some interesting things that I thought that he said was the ceiling of Max Johnson. You know, he in his own way, was pretty much trying to say uh, that Max is kind of scratching the surface, right? Um, so we'll see. We'll see. I, I mean, I think that he was scratching the surface, and if that's the kid scratching the surface, then God bless us all. God bless us all. If, if the Florida game and the Ole Miss game was that kid scratching the surface, God bless the United States of college football. All right. And it was also interesting to hear, you know, Cam Cameron, which I know that name doesn't go over well, uh, in LSU circles, but to hear him say for Cam Cameron to say, Hey, look, you're never going to have two receivers at the same time better than these two guys. Okay. And it's just, it, it's, it's crazy to hear somebody um, talk about that at that level. All right, let's do this. Guys, I got to talk about my good friends over the Drake Williams Law Firm, drakewilliamslawfirm.com, 985-386-7600. It's 985-386-7600. Real estate successions, DWIs, anything, everything in the entire state of Louisiana, they can take care of it. Nothing is too big or too small for the Drake Williams Law Firm. Again, it's 985-386-7600. 985-386-7600. Tell them your friend Blake sent you on by. Uh, Toss Dive Man says, Kurt Paul, yeah. And look, what's crazy is, is the – um. What's crazy is <laughs> I called him from another the AYS lines and Zach said he almost declined. Anyway, um, what's crazy is is the success that those guys had. Um, I mean, even in the I don't I don't want to say that the the <laughs> well I, you you guys know what I'm going to say about Les Miles, but the success that him and Jarvis and Jeremy and um. Terrence McGee and OBJ, all those guys had in that offense. And it's interesting to see, guys, we're 10 years removed from 2011. 10 years removed from the great season of 11, and we know all know how it ended. The next year, uh, Matt would take over, and we remember all that. And it's interesting to take his perspective on that. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. Uh, Adam says, hashtag ask Blake, which Louisiana Southland team did you hate to play against uh, in their house? Just curious. Um, i tell you who I didn't like the most, and I thought it was the most difficult to play, was maybe uh, Stephen F. Austin. 
Uh, Stephen F. Austin, I'll never forget. We went to Stephen F. Austin. We went up by like 28, and they came back, and they wound up beating us in like double overtime. Brian Babman, uh, why, I think he wound up getting knocked out in that game, and uh, Zach Beatty, or, or Tyler Beatty, excuse me, uh, came in that game. Uh, Stephen F., for whatever reason, their fans were worse than any Southland Conference team that I've ever been around. You know what's the funny thing was is that we would beat the dog shit out of Texas State, and then the following year they went into the uh, FBS. Guys, the year that uh, the year after Texas State went to the FBS, the year before we beat the dog shit out of them. Those freaking Rudy Poos, they suck so bad. Uh, Holden Lee says, I, I still remember Jarvis Landry's catch over my boy uh, Peter against Arkansas. Yeah, that, what a hell of a catch, man. What a hell of a catch. God, those were the days, man. Those were the absolute days. And I remember just being cold that day, too, like cold as hell, as it always kind of is when we play, play Arkansas. Uh, Florence says, great show. Thank you, my friend. Thank you very much. Uh, and Harold says, thanks for all the hardworking years as a Tiger, talking to um, Zach. Uh, I, I do want to get to this before we get out of the show tonight is uh, Jake Peach, fire your questions into hashtag Ask Blake. So any questions you got about the team, what's going on, fire them in there. I do want to get to this. I mentioned it a little bit earlier about Jake Peach. And now, I, look, we've talked a lot, at a lot of length um, about Durante Jones and Jake Peach, but being around them and hearing them coach and teach is something different than hearing about it from Coach O or somebody or Joe Brady or somebody else. Uh, as I alluded to earlier in the show, last Monday, I mentioned that he wanted the running backs to run routes like Christian McCaffrey, that there's going to be a lot of choice routes in this offense. And we saw that. We heard J John Emery talk about that today, that him and Jake Peach breaking down uh, Christian McCaffrey film and him looking at John saying, look, you're a lot like this cat. You're a lot like this guy. Going through that, we saw the break, the the, the part of practice yesterday where you, you're running the zone, the uh, the RPO, you're rolling out right, and then you're throwing to the running back at the end of the back of the end zone. Guys, that is vintage. That is vintage Alabama. That is vintage Steve Sarkeesian. Places that Jake Peets has gone, taking pieces, great pieces of those offenses, and put them in. Being around MVP type caliber, NFL MVP type caliber guys, and Christian McCaffrey. That is what you're going to get with a guy that comes from the NFL, that's been in college football before, been around a lot of great offensive coordinators. Joe Joe Brady, Steve Sarkeesian, Lane Kiffin. Um, who was the offensive coordinator? I forget the other one that he was with. But regardless, a plethora amount of, uh, of great offensive coordinators that this guy's been around, been around football his entire life. But that's just one small step of, of being behind the scenes of what you're going to see from Jake Peets. One small step. Chris McCaffrey goes down. Multitudes of O-linemen go down a season ago in Carolina. And Teddy Bridgewater still does what he's doing. Still the, a, a guy, Joe Brady, having nothing but confidence to send him down and say, hey, this is the guy that I think you should hire. You're going to get NFL caliber type of coaching from him, and it's not stopping the energy he's bringing into practices. So just to for people who want to know what the practices are like, him teaching. Could you imagine Jake Peets, who was the, the coach for Christian McCaffrey and Kevin Falk teaching that running back room, who quite honestly is so deep right now? So deep. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. Um, Call the Cat Dunn says, will, when will Zach's podcast debut? I think maybe early next week. Um, maybe early next week. Uh, Henry Pugh says, that was Zach's last throw. Yeah, it was. How sad is that, man? Uh, Shane says, imagine if we had Saban the whole time. Yikes. I don't even want to talk about that. I don't even want to talk about that. That Rudy Pooh. Hey, speaking of this, speaking of this, I mentioned this last night. Saban's more pissed off about his offense than anybody. <laughs> you think somebody's struggling, go listen to that man. We can't block. We can't catch. We can't throw. Uh, Brandon Reese says, can you imagine OBJ, Jarvis, Chase, and Jefferson all on the same team? God bless me. Thaddeus Moss. Think of the running backs. Clyde Edwards-Alaire, Jeremy Hill, Terrence McGee. I mean, 
guys, people see people forget about my boy Terrence McGee. You remember TCU when he broke it out and sealed the game for you to win against TCU? I mean, people forget stuff like that. Um, we're forgetting a young wide receiver in that in that room too. I'm for, I forget who I'm thinking of. Uh, Brian says Pete seems to have a very high football IQ. People worried that he's never called plays before. Neither had Brady in 2019. Guys, I don't buy into that really. You, you, you know, like I, I don't buy in the the play calling thing to this extent. Neither did Rhett Loxley. Uh, and then he he was the offensive coordinator uh, at, at Alabama, now the head coach at Maryland. I mean, guys, there's so many different individuals that have not done that but have been on the headset. Guys, this right here, this right here, this, if you're listening to the podcast, the headset, that he listened to a whole year of Joe Brady. He's listened to whole years of Lane Kiffin, Nick Saban, Steve Sarkeesian, and others. You think he doesn't take away from that kind of stuff? The man's got playbooks, Lane Kiffin, Sark, Pete's, I mean Pete's, uh, Brady, and he's incorporating them all. It doesn't stop. By the way, everybody talking about the running game, they're, LSU is going to line up and be physical up front running the football. It's what you got to run zone blocking schemes to be able to run the RPO game, and that's what they're doing. I'm just so I'm so excited for this for this year, and I God bless it. You know, nobody's gonna to going to give LSU the credit that they deserve either. Um, Mark says Elias Rick said communication between the DBs is way better than last year with Jones. Hashtag a coach that cares. Something that um, something that's interesting on that one too was is that um, Elias talked about in the meeting rooms. They're in the same they're in the same meeting room communicating. And Durante and Corey are both coaching and teaching. Do you understand how how humble that you have to be for Durante? You know, Durante Jones could have walked into LSU's football ops and said, I'm the new DC. Move your ass over. This is my show, my way or the highway. Hey, you know what, Corey? We're going to combine together. I'm going to coach the safeties. You're going to coach the corners. We're going to come together and we're going to coach both of them. When I'm calling plays and when I'm looking at the entire defense, I need you there right by my side to coach that entire defensive back room. That is what is going on. It's what's going on. The man is humble enough and knows enough to say, hey, you know what? Ed Orgeron's the best defensive line coach in the country. The best D-line coach in the country. If that man wants to coach D-line and he's going to be the head coach and has the energy to go out there and do it, like how Saban does DBs two-thirds of his practice, who am I to say, no, coach, you can't do that? I thought it was interesting what Elias Rick said. I thought it was interesting the connection, that uh, the, the friendship that him and um, Derek Stingley Jr. have. Derek Stingley mentoring him like, hey, man, this is what I struggled with last year. You, I had a great freshman year. You had a great freshman year. Man, look, this is what I struggled with last year. Tell me that that's not, that's not just great to have. The one word in all of this, it's not is it is basically what Mark's saying is communication. That is the biggest word in all of this. Uh Henry says Traven Doral. Yep. Uh Mark says Saban OC, Bill O'Brien, another Cam Cameron. I'm not gonna go that far. Guys, look, you look, I don't mean this in the wrong way. Bill O'Brien had some really good offenses now. Uh, B Good says, I love not getting credit makes you hungry. Sure does. Uh, Jason says, hashtag ask Blake, how much offensive input during the games will Mangus have? A lot. He's got a lot of input in the passing game. A lot of input in the passing game. It's a great question, Jason. And I think that if those two guys, which what we've seen at practice, um, from Jake Peets and DJ Mangus, if they can connect and be one and work together, guys, the sky's the limit for this team. Everybody, please, somebody, tell me that you're hearing good stuff from your own local media about this team. It's, yeah, we can go 10-2, and two, but. Yeah, I think we're going to be talented, but. We're going to do this, but. You can't say that this team's going to go 10-2 and, 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 and be negative the whole goddamn time. I'm so, I, I am so done with 
this negative nature. Stop being so god dang negative. Stop. You 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 have the take of well, you know what? I don't want to be like a homer. Dude, you are a homer. We all are on here. YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, whatever. We're all homers. Stop with that stupid ass take. You spend money. I spend money. We, we, we revolve our lives around LSU and you want to say I'm not a homer. I'm so tired of everybody that covers this damn team being so damn negative. Paul Bett says, of course not. The local media is now obsessed in getting Coach O fired. Probably. Um, Tucker asked a good question, interesting question here. Asked what's going on with Jarrell Cherry. Uh, man, I really don't know. A guy that's just kind of been, you know, just, uh, I mean, kind of got lost in the shuffle a little bit. I know that I think it was today and yesterday. I did see Jarrell out. Uh, um. <laughs> Oh shit. Um Jarrell was in a non-contact jersey. I'll just I'll leave it there. I can, I'll leave it there. Um Paul Bad says LSU comes out in malls, UCLA, starts the season off right. The local media can pound sand. Yeah, but man, it's just like guys fan base just can't get fired up because I mean it, it's like Everywhere you turn around, it's some negative shit. Guys, I'm sick of it. And don't think that when I go out there and see him around, I'm not going to say that shit. I do not hold my tongue. The reason they don't like me is because I don't hold my tongue. Um, Chelsea Roberts says, uh, random hashtag ask Blake, favorite LSU game you've been to in person? Oh, shoot. Oh. Um, Florida 2007 comes to mind. Um, hmm. It's a good question. I need to think about that. Maybe Florida 2007. It's a fun game. Uh, Mark Lake. What's up, brother? Says, didn't Cherry have offseason surgery this season? Yeah, he did have an injury. I don't remember if he had surgery or not. Uh, he's out there now with a non-contact jersey. Yeah, he's out there with a non-contact jersey. He's out there with a non-contact jersey. And also says Webb is out there practicing at DN. I saw that. Uh, he's starting to fill out some. Yeah, I saw that. Phil, talking about Philip Webb. Um, honestly, Mark, I, I don't know how to, how to kind of say it. Other and um, really, man, other than just kind of has got that fit, that that body type looking at him, you know what I mean? Like, when you look at the kid, you just know he's a DN. Like how Damone Clark reminds me of an outside rushing linebacker. Um, He just, he has that. He has that. Uh, a couple more we'll get out of here. Jared, Jared, uh, Jared Billy, what's up, Jared? Says, Florida 2007 was insane. His cars uh, backed all the way uh, past Tigerland. The crazy thing about that, man, and I'm, probably shouldn't say this man i got so lubricated uh <laughs> uh that night and um a friend's parents had a camper trailer um and i did have a crush on his sister and they let me sleep in their camper trailer because i could you know we i missed my ride S partying and then Slept in their camper trailer. We, you know, we all hung out and thought his, um, you know, thought his sister looked cute. I was like, what happened, girl? What happened? What's happening, girl? There you go. Um, Carl Dunn says, LSU Ole Miss 2003. Eli uh, Manning stumbles at the pocket. Yep. Yep. What a what a what a crazy, crazy game that was. George says we can run the table. Definitely have the talent. I got a feeling we're gonna go. We're gonna be in the playoffs. Got the talent, man. You just gotta see um see how they 
see how they go with all that. Uh, Jacob Cole says, would Damone Clark be more successful as Ed Ru- edge rusher? With a n- with not a hand in the dirt, yes. As like a 3-4 outside defensive end in my or outside linebacker, in my opinion, yeah. I mean, look, we saw him do that against Alabama in 19. Got some really good pressure uh, on Tua. I, I, I just I, I think that he's kind of plays out of position a little bit. I mean, that's what I would do. That's what I think. But I think you're kind of cut, you know, trimming hairs there. But I've seen him have more success on the outside than I've seen him in the inside. Guys, it's not easy. It is not easy playing inside linebacker in today's day and age. It one might be one of the toughest positions to play. Uh, no, I did not, Paul. No, I did not. I didn't. All right, all right, all right. What's happening, girl? What's happening? For the entire week, um, the next week, everybody kept saying it. What happened, girl? Like all of my friends. No, we were. I was getting text messages. Black. What happened, girl? <laughs> Bro, I just kept saying it to her. Very lubricated, like extremely. Uh, I don't drink anymore. All right, let's get out of here. Peace out, guys. Have a good night. We'll see you tomorrow. We'll be we'll bring some other guests, some great guests on here. We'll see you then. Y'all have a good night. Pe- Until then, peace out, Girl Scouts.